The focus of today's war strategy, you are a game changer. And the scripture would be Genesis chapter 18, verses 16 through 23 and verse 32 through 33. And it begins, and the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his people and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgments that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Verse 32. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Preadventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. The strategy. Lord, the key that you lay before us to unlock the secret things of your heart is found in trust. To earn your trust is to receive access to all that you will do in this time. Abraham was found trustworthy in your sight. So therefore, he was granted full access to your plans, even though he asked knock, not of this thing. As a result, he was able to add his input into your plans and you heeded him. He was also able to pray for lots and you delivered him. Gaining access to your trust does not only allow us to know your plans, but to also contribute our ideas, thoughts, and feelings to it, in which you considered in the same way you consider the inputs of Abraham. You said in your word that life is in the blood, and when Cain spilled the blood of righteous Abel, his blood cried out to you from the ground for justice. Because of the multitude of blood that was shed, which stained the ground of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was a great cry for justice that reached your ear. As a result, you came down to earth and walked the city to bear witness of the accusation and found no ten righteous people among them, and so the city was destroyed. Today, Father, the cry of the blood of many has covered not only the city, but the entire earth. As you began to walk the earth, many has been found wanting and has missed the hour of your visitation, as many has missed the hour of your visitation in Sodom and Gomorrah. The righteous of the earth has been sealed with the promise and have been sealed with your seal, and will soon be taken out of the doomed cities before the fire falls from heaven. The prayers of the righteous as Abraham has prayed for Lot's deliverance is the only thing holding back sudden destruction upon this earth. May the intercessors never forget the power of their prayer and remember Abraham as he prayed over Lot while he was yet still in a land doomed for destruction. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the power of intercession, of the power of intercessory prayer. Because Abraham, Father, interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah for the doomed city. He had a heart for the people, O oh God. 
And even though he knew that they were a wicked people, he still sought that maybe you can spare the land, you can spare the inhabitants from this great judgment that would come upon it. And so, Father, he was able to give his inputs to your plans that you desired to do in Sodom and Gomorrah, and you took his plans into consideration. You modified your plans. You had your mindset as to what you would do, and then you sought his input, and he gave his heart's input to it, and he says, I will take that into consideration, that if I could find 10 righteous people in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, I shall not destroy it. And so, Father... We see in the scriptures that there was not found 10. And so judgment fell. But what was so crucial and critical, Father, for that reading of the scripture, that portion that you have taught us in this strategy, is that just because you have pronounced judgment on a city, a judgment on a situation, judgment on a circumstance, it does not mean that the people who has a trusting position in you, a trusted position in you, cannot pray and intercede and also put in their input, Father, to your plans that you may actually lessen the blow or actually give more time, Father, for a, a situation to turn around so you would not have to bring about destruction upon them, bring about sorrow upon the people, which is still sorrow to your heart for you have to do it. And so what was so interesting, Father, is that because you knew that Abraham was a trustworthy person. He did not have to ask you, what were you going to do? He did not have to ask you, what were your plans in Sodom and Gomorrah? No, he did not. But because you knew that he was trustworthy, you decided in yourself that you was going to reveal to him the thing in which you were going to do. He did not have to seek it out, but you brought it to him. And so are you looking for a people, Father, with trustworthy hearts through the way that they live their lives in word and in actions, O oh God, being lined up to your will and obedience to you. So this way you can begin to start speaking to them and tell them your heart. Tell them your plans and the things that you desire to do and in waiting for an input from us as to how we feel about certain things or what some things that you may also want to put in the plans. You're saying, Father, that we have the ability, Father, to create with you, to plan with you and to execute things with you, O God, in accordance with your will. So as we read your word, Father, as we read the book of Revelation and we know, Father, that everything will come to pass. You're also giving us an input, Father, as to the level of impact and to the things that can also happen while the process is taking place so that many lives can be spared, Father, and that the devastation may not have to be so great. And so this day, Father, you're offering an invitation, an invitation onto your people who has a trustworthy position with you, who prays with you and walk in communion and obedience with you, that they have an open invitation to begin to speak your, their heart's issues concerning the, the things that is happening in this world, uh, concerning the judgments that is coming. You're giving us an invitation to, to give an input into your plans that you are going to do so that you will take these plans into consideration as you begin to go and execute your judgment. And so we thank you so much, Father, for being such a caring Father who will hear us, Father. We thank you so much for being so loving, Father, that you would take the time to, to, to consider our hearts are as little as we are and as weak of a people as we are and as great of a God that you are. You're taking the time to consider our hearts in the matter and we'll take that into the planning phase, Father, and the things that you're carrying out to do. So you're calling for for your people to begin to start speaking their hearts issue. Speak the way they feel. Speak what's going on. Speak if there's any way that this can happen or that can happen or there can be deliverance here, deliverance there to speak because you are willing to put these plans into action as well as you did it for Abraham. And also in accordance to your scripture, O oh God, it showed that when the blood stains the ground, when there is blood on the ground because of the blood of the innocents that was slain, that there is a cry for justice that comes up to your ear. And so, Father, great is the cry that is coming to you right now for the multitude of blood that was shed upon the earth, O oh God, because of lawlessness and sin. And so, indeed, you said, Father, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that everything that we need to know for this hour is in your word. And in your word, Father, it says that she was amongst 
pretty much you walked into the t into the camp with where Abraham was. You was in the presence of Abraham where when he spoke to you before you had ventured to Sodom and Gomorrah. So with that being said, Lord, it means that you have been walking the grounds of the earth through America, through Europe, through Africa, through the four corners of the globe. You have been walking through these lands where the ground soaked with blood of the innocence of God has been crying out to you. And this is what's been happening, Father. The blood of the babies, the blood of the innocent children, men, women, and children, Father, has been crying out to you, Father, speaking that, oh, speaking that they, there would be justice because of what has happened to them. And so you have come down, Father. You have actually walked amongst us and to see and to hear and to know if what they said is true and that you will know. And so, Father, we know that this world is guilty, guilty of treason against heaven. And so we know, Father, that there has been a sealing and a, a judgment that has been sent out, Father, that you will not relent from. That judgment shall fall upon a nation because of the blood that was shed, because of the innocence, Father, that was slain. So judgment is coming. And you have walked the land, Father, as you walked in Sodom and Gomorrah, and you have pronounced judgments on different parts of the world, O oh God. And now what you're saying to us this day, what you're calling your people to this day that has a trustworthy position with you is that we know what you're going to do. You did not hide from us the thing that you are going to do. But who is now willing to step up and begin to communicate their heart's issues, O oh God, that you will begin to have more mercy upon the people and that you will even lighten the judgments that is to fall so that this devastation may not be so great and many lives are lost that could have been saved this day. And so we pray, Father, that this will serve as a clarion call to all your people, that they will begin to speak up, that they will begin to come to you in boldness, O oh God, and speak the issues of their heart to see a change in the atmosphere, that the judgment that has been set forth for places like America shall not be as severe as as many as it could be father because your intercessors has been praying or for europe or for africa or for middle east or for anywhere else we thank you lord god and i pray that this clarion call will go out to the four corners of the earth this day and it's in jesus name we pray amen a great event is being prepared a war and a wedding feast will have their place in time Soon and not yet is the word that the watchman gives as he strains his eyes through the darkness of the night mist. He can sense that just beyond the horizon a great brightness is preparing to break forth. Arise, you sleepers. Shake off your slumber, he calls. Come and fill your lamp with fresh oil. Trim your wick. Cry out in the streets and do not let your voice be silent. For the coming of the great King is at hand. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Only wait for the Lord. Be strong and have a good courage. And wait for the Lord.
the Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth. And though there's fear in your streets, tonight something's already birthed. Tabernacle is rising right now in the hearts of those who believe. There's the sound of a freedom shout rising up from under your feet. If we lift up our voices and call on the Lord, He will come. And the nations will see that salvation comes from Zion. those who will stand unafraid in the night hour who will give no sleep to their eyes no peace or rest give them to you Lord until you make Jerusalem a praise in all the earth you have sworn it by your name hallelujah And so blow a shofar in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain, says the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. <laughs> 